He ran so fast up the stairs. I feel like he had like a, a PTSD moment. If I seem a little bit off, it's just because I'm on a lot of different medications right now. So as y'all know, I've been avoiding going out unless it's completely necessary because I just don't want to bring RSV or some other kind of uh, virus to my premature son. Something happened where I really should have gone to urgent care as soon as it happened, but I didn't because I didn't want to go into the urgent care where I knew there was going to be sick people. So it was two days ago, it was six in the morning, and I went into the bathroom, did my business, and then I stretched my hands above my head. Normal. Everyone does that, right? I stretched my hands above my head, and suddenly I had this sharp stabbing pain down the left side of my spine and through my neck. And I have a very high pain tolerance. I've been dealing with chronic pain for the better part of, let's see, since 2015. So that's seven years. And it takes a lot to bring me to my knees or to even bring me to tears. I don't, I don't cry very often when it comes to physical pain, but this was a whole other level of pain. Like there were some of my contractions when I gave birth that I thought felt better than this pain. Like, it was, it's the sharpness that gets me. Oh, did you wake up and not know where mommy was? I'm sorry. I was just, I was right there. I was still next to you. Wanna go sit in the nursery, huh? You feel better? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Is that better to have mommy next to you? Yeah? I debated about starting over, but I'm just gonna keep going. So needless to say, I was in excruciating pain. So much pain that I started bawling my head off. And Cameron was downstairs at the time making some coffee, so I just went to the bedroom door because I had like these little T-Rex arms. I just, I couldn't move my head from one side to the other and my arms are just kind of stuck in this little T-Rex position. So I managed to open the door and call for him like, like help. And he ran so fast up the stairs. I feel like he had like a, a PTSD moment. I feel bad about that. But he ran past me to the bassinet and... I was like, no, 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 it's me, it's me. We pretty much pulled out all the stops. I did some Arnica topically. I took 800 milligrams of ibuprofen. I had some leftover gabapentin from when I had the, the peripheral neuropathy. So I took 200 milligrams of that. I had 1600 milligrams of magnesium, just hoping it would kind of loosen things up. And it barely took the edge off. It was just like, it, it dulled the sharpness a little bit. And I, I really couldn't do anything. I could not take care of my son. I could barely take care of myself. I couldn't even bend over the sink to brush my teeth. Cameron had to stay home from work. He kept saying, you know, maybe we should go to urgent care, but you know, me being the <laughs> paranoid mama bear that I am, I'm like, no, I don't want to get exposed to RSV. And when stuff like this happens, usually it's like a 24-hour thing, and then the pain kind of lets up the next morning. It did not. This morning, it was just as bad, if not a, a tiny bit worse. I felt like the dang Tin Man waiting for my, my joints to be oiled or something. I was so stiff. <sighs> like, you should have seen me trying to get out of bed. I laugh in retrospect, but it was not funny while it was happening. So this morning, I took the same cocktail of meds, couple hours went by. I mean, it takes about two or three hours for the gabapentin to, to actually do anything. And it had been a few hours and still nothing. So I was like, you know what, maybe I should just go to urgent care because this is day two that he's staying home from work because I, I really could not even hold Kieran. It was so terrible. I'm just sitting there thinking like, oh, yeah, let's go to urgent care. Somebody <laughs> dose me with some morphine. I don't care what it is. Just like, I need some relief. So we got to the urgent care 15 minutes after they opened. And I was thinking, cool, it's a Wednesday. I'm, it's just opening. I should be in and out. But there were already several patients there. They must have been waiting before it even opened. And they, a lot of them were children. And they were 
oh my gosh, they were just coughing like this wet cough. Um, some of them were so young that they couldn't be masked, but yeah, I just, I checked myself in and then I went back outside. And then two and a half hours later, I was finally seen. I'm assuming it took so long because they do have to sanitize the rooms and they have to, you know, sanitize themselves after seeing sick patients. What ended up happening is they prescribed me a muscle relaxer, which still hasn't been filled at my pharmacy. I was injected with some kind of steroid and then an NSAID. I forget what they were called, but um, they monitored me for 10 minutes for any kind of reactions. I didn't have any, but I noticed I was able to turn my head a little bit after the 10 minutes. Thank you, modern medicine. <laughs> the doctor thinks that I pulled a muscle somehow and that became inflamed and then entrapped a, a nerve. And um, yeah, just with the, the two injections, I felt within an hour, like I just feel better. It's still painful but it's tolerable and I can, I'm mobile. I'm able to take care of him. So uh, Cameron did go back to work and I'm feeling so much better. Like you should have seen my face the last couple of days. <laughs> Cameron was like, I swear it's like your homicide face. I don't think I could even re recreate that, that facial expression. I think I would have to be in that kind of pain to recreate. He's like, your face just completely changed. Like you weren't even the same person. <laughs> And though I wasn't in the waiting room when everybody was in there coughing, I still, I still just, I took my clothes off and I took a bath and scrubbed myself head to toe, just, you know, as a precaution. I really wanted to upload the winter baby haul today on Wednesday, but you know, obviously that, that's not happening. I had ordered this adorable... Um, holly leaf fabric like the stretchy fleece to make Kieran some jammies because I wanted that to be part of the haul but I had to kind of create a pattern out of some pants that he already has in size three to six and then I was just testing that out um, Monday was it yeah Monday and then I was like okay Tuesday I'm gonna make his little jammies and uh, yep Tuesday morning woke up and just stretched just stretched that's it. I think that's honestly how you know you're approaching 40 is that you do something normal completely. It's not like you were jumping over hurdles or climbing a tree or doing something weird. You know, you just stretch or one of my friends was like, yeah, I just sleep. And then I wake up like that. Kieran has just been exploding with vocalizations the last few days. He's doing a lot of uh, mimicry, so I'll make a sound, and you can see he's watching my mouth, and, and he repeats it. It's so adorable. And then sometimes I'll do, like, something with my tongue, like, la, 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 and then I'll do, like, a, and you can see he tries to, he's like, how did she do that? He, like, tries to, <laughs> with his lips. I know baby milestones are, you know, probably boring to your uh, veteran mom, but for me, you know, it's just, it's super fascinating and it's wonderful to watch. I think I might actually have a few clips of him doing some, some mimicry. So, um, I'll insert it if I have it. If I don't, then. <coughs> yeah. I want to show you guys the, uh, the pattern I attempted to make. The pattern that I had for baby pajamas that was like a three to six was massively oversized. I feel like just the one side, like the front side of the pant, you could like fold it over and that'd be the appropriate size for a, a leg. My little helper. So this was the pattern and then this is a three to six that I had in his uh, dresser. So you can see it's, uh, it's a bit big. So using the size of these little gray joggers, I traced one side of the pattern and then I moved it over so it was, you know, just a little bit bigger than these joggers. And then I traced the other side. So I ended up with something like this. And as you can see, it is way more appropriate. I used this little star stretchy fleece just as sort of a little practice run. And this is what I ended up with. I think they're super, super cute. And I think it's going to work perfectly for like a size three to six for the holidays. I want to show you guys the holiday fleece so bad, but I want it to be part of his little winter haul, so I'm hoping that's going to be the next vlog. I am so glad I'm feeling so much better because I have orders piled up for my Etsy shop, and um, 
There was no way that I was gonna get those done. There's a little sneak peek of our tree, however. And all of Cameron's birthday gifts for tomorrow. I got this really cute Christmas tree skirt, but I do have to steam out all the wrinkles. But yeah, it's super cute. It's like this little burlap and it has these sparkly little snowflakes on it. This little guy loves looking at the lights. Oh, something else that I noticed, and I don't know if this is like a milestone thing, but whenever I'm eating something and Kieran's awake, I will show it to him on the fork. I'll tell him what it is, and I'll sort of put it near his face so he can smell it, and then I'll put it in my mouth. And I go like, hmm, because I want him to develop a, a good relationship with food. The last few times that I've done this, actually, he I've noticed he his eyes like track the food. I kind of feel like he's going to end up like his cousin who just started grabbing food out of people's hands and stuffing it in her mouth. I want to say his cousin was five months old and they were sitting around the, the dinner table and um, her mom had a dinner roll in her hand and she was sort of like talking about it and um, my niece was on her lap and she just grabbed it and stuffed it in her mouth. <laughs> the frenzy to, to grab it and take it out of her mouth. My God. I'm really not sure what I'm going to try as far as his first food. Oh my God, I can't believe we're already talking about that. I was thinking of maybe trying avocado because I know that the green is very vibrant to him and it's kind of, uh, you know, one of those things that isn't too strong in flavor. Just thought it might be a good first food. Let me know what your first foods for your babies were. Here you go. I just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, like, PTSD and grief because I think I've fared pretty well with the PTSD and the grief, but something caught me totally off guard the other day. Kind of like how me calling Cameron for help really caught him off guard, and I feel so bad that he kind of went through that. Like, he came in in a haze. Like, he, like, burst through the door, ran past me to the bassinet to check on Kieran, and... Hi. And yeah, it, something similar happened to me the other day. I was making us some protein style double doubles, like homemade. And I, I love pickles. I love mustard. So I remember finding this brilliant condiment at um, Trader Joe's that was mustard with, with dill pickle seasoning in it. So I'm setting up, you know, everything, all the vegetables to be chopped, the uh, burgers are going on the stove, and I pull out the condiments, and I pull out this mustard with dill seasoning, and my heart just sank because a memory from 4th of July that year surfaced, and I remember eating burgers on the 4th of July with that mustard. And I remember Kaya just kick, kick, kicking away like she really enjoyed it. And I remember saying that, oh man, she's going to be like a mustard and dill pickle girl like her mama. And then a week later, she was gone. And I, I just went into the bathroom off of the kitchen and I just quietly sobbed into some tissue paper. I mean, Cameron heard me, so I had to explain myself, but it was just... Um, it really caught me off guard. Things that are obvious grief triggers, things that are obvious PTSD triggers, you sort of go into it knowing that it could trigger you. So you already have your guard up. Like when I go to Target, like I go into Target, I already know there's going to be little baby girls there. I already know that I'm going to see, you know, the clothes, things that I felt that she would wear. There's going to be things there that are going to trigger me, so I already have it in my mind. I'm going to see these things, so my, my guard is up. It's the things that you don't expect. It's things like condiments in your refrigerator that you really would not expect that, that get you, and they get you good. Hell, I even have my guard up regarding, like, steak, because Kaya loved steak like she would just go on a kicking frenzy after I ate steak and it's all I craved I just I wanted steak 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 all the time with her and I even have my guard up when it comes to cooking and, and eating steak because I know it's a trigger I know that's something that I experienced with her and it's a memory tied to her but I you know that mustard was out of left field I know there's a lot of new people here that just recently lost babies and 
I've been getting emails and, and comments and everything of, you know, thank you so much for speaking my language. Like, I feel like I can't talk to anybody and watching your vlogs makes me feel so much less alone. And I am so, I'm so grateful that I can be that for others who are going through it because it does feel like you're completely alone. But at the same time, I hate, I hate that anybody has to know what this feels like. But, you know, in keeping with being transparent, it's just, I'm over a year and a half on and I still have moments where something that I don't even expect can just send me through like a little PTSD episode and, you know, I just have like a little grief attack. I know that Cameron really wants to do a sit down video and discuss what grief and what pregnancy after loss um, feels like from dad's perspective, from the partner's perspective. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely something he really wants to sit down and talk about, but he's not exactly <laughs> sure how to, how to start or how to, hi Damien, it's, it's Damien. <laughs> um, thank you for rubbing your teeth on my finger. Because the experience really is totally different for the partner or the dad or you know um they they grieve differently they they experience things differently they express themselves differently so if anybody has any questions for Cameron regarding like um grief after the loss of a child and you know pregnancy after loss and what it feels like to take your rainbow home stuff like that feel free to leave a, a comment or a question and um, cause I know he really, he really wants to do that. He's been wanting to do that for several months and we just haven't gotten around to it. So let me know. <laughs> this is why I love you, right Squawk? You just, you're so cuddly. I just love it all. Jealousy. Are we jealous? Oh, my little fur kids. They always know when mommy's not feeling the best, huh? You're such a good boy, Squawk. Love you. Well, I think Cameron's going to be coming home. I ordered some groceries and, you know, baby items for pickup at Target. And then we have to go to my pharmacy to get my muscle relaxers. So I think we're going to end the vlog here. But thank you so much for watching. I know it wasn't like a really fun vlog, but, you know, it's just what's been going on. And uh, hopefully the next one's going to be the cute little winter haul. All right. Bye. Oh, let's, let's do the cat paw. It's a fart knock life for us. It's a fart knock life for us. Instead of pooping, we break wind.